ladies and gentlemen, when multiplying uh, complex numbers uh, with our imaginary term i, the main important thing that we want to do is look at this. And this has a lot of the same properties of when we just multiplied polynomials. So what I want you guys to think about this is when you're multiplying, think of this as 7 minus 6x times 2 minus 3x. All right? Just think about it. Forget about the i for a second and forget about all the properties of i. Just treat it like a variable. And our most common variable that we could use was, uh, was x. So when we multiply, all right, if I was going to multiply these two binomials, the best way that I like to do it to keep everything organized is to create a box. And because remember, when multiplying two terms, you're really creating an area. So what I do is I take one term on top, and I put the other term on the other side. All right, and if it was a trimol trinomial, then you'd continue another set of boxes. Since it's a binomial and a binomial, I break up my box into two different sections. Then all you do is multiply your length times your width for each box. So 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times negative 3x is going to be a negative 21x. 2 times negative 6x is negative 12x. And negative 6x times negative 3x is a positive 8x squared. And the cool thing about, yes? Positive 18x squared. Where is the i? OK, I'm just going to go back with the i in just a second. x times x is x squared. Right? A number multiplied by itself is going to be is going to be squared. So it would be x times x equals x squared. Just like 3 times 3 is 3 squared, right? What's 3 squared? It's 3 times 3. So if I have 3 times 3, that's going to be 3 squared. So x times x is going to be x squared. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll, I'll go and do another example here in a second. Now, our, here's our problem. Our i, we're not including our i in this. Have we, Terrell? OK? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to have to sit back there if you can't just pay attention to this. Okay. So we haven't used the i yet. All right. So to incorporate the i, just kind of replace the x's with the i's. All right. And that's what I want. You guys don't have to use the x's, but I'm trying to make a point here is that we multiply with i's just like we would with any other variable. So if I replaced everything with the x's with the i's, you guys can see my final equation or final expression is 14 minus, uh, this is going to be 33i, Courtney, kind of like we talked about, plus 18i squared. Right? And now here's the big difference that we get into the, with this point because x squared, we know, just deals with this. x squared equals x times x, right? That's where x squared comes from. But when we're talking about i squared, we're not talking about the variable i. We're talking about the imaginary number i squared. And we wrote out that i squared equals negative 1. So when you're evaluating for this expression, you're going to have 14 minus 33i minus or plus 18 times negative 1. Because i squared, we say, represents negative 1. So therefore, this is really a minus 18. 14 minus 33i minus 18. And therefore, you can see my final answer is negative 4 minus 33i. Does that kind of make a little sense? The only really difference, I'm saying it's the same thing when using variables. The only difference is you just plug in your i, but when you get i squared, you're going to incorporate that for negative 1. And it's also important to see that your cross terms, those, those combine to give you that negative 33i. Sorry?